Good morning, everyone. I would invite you to please stand. We begin our prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Francis Stephen Egloff died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant Fran to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered Bildad and Shuhite and said, Oh, would that my words were written down. Would that they were inscribed in a record that with an iron chisel and with lead they were cut in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my vindicator lives and that he will at last stand forth upon the dust whom I myself shall see, my own eyes, not another's, shall behold him. And from the flesh I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord is my shepherd, there 
Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even have the courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Only now that but also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you 
when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. watching and listening to the rather lively hubbub out in the narthex before we started, and then taking some time yesterday afternoon, I was scanning through the tribute wall on the funeral home website, and there are a lot of tributes left, and discovered something I did not know about Fran, snow skiing. I worked at a hospital over in the western end of the state before going to seminary and a bunch of my coworkers and I, this is near Catalucci, and we decided, let's go try snow skiing. I discovered very quickly I was better off sticking with the water skis. The landings are softer. But, you know, one of the things that goes on is, you know, you were spending a lot of time getting reacquainted, seeing people maybe you've not seen for a while, and sharing stories, especially sharing memories and things about Fran. The tributes were all sharing things of people's memories of their having met and known Fran. And now we've come into here and we're taking things and sort of changing gears a little bit because we're hearing passages from scripture and offering up prayers to God that take all of this and put them on a foundation of reminding us of what God has done. Because what God has done is transformed all of this into something that lifts us up with a hope that can't be broken by anything. That first reading is from the 19th chapter of the book of Job in the Old Testament. Job has gone through a series of incredibly just totally devastating life experiences, losing his children, losing his wife, losing all of his possessions, his flocks, his herds, just one thing after another, after another, after another, leaving him basically with nothing. And through it all, he finds what holds him up. And it's expressed in that passage that we heard word that it was chiseled into rock and lined with lead so that it wouldn't disappear. I know that my vindicator lives. He learned where his strength, where his true hope, and where his greatest blessing and riches was based in God. It goes on into the responsorial psalm, probably one of the most common ones used for funeral services and that a lot of people I know use as a prayer when times are getting challenging and tough. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Even in the midst of trial and tribulation, I know that his rod and his strap, they're there. They are comforting me. They're strengthening me. They're holding me up. And I think we've all been through times when we needed something to hold it up because we thought, you know, life experiences were just about ready to bowl us over and knock us down into the dust and leave us there gasping for breath. But God's presence is there and it's there to hold us up. Paul learned it. You know, he, we hear from him writing to the church in Rome that he's on his way to, to visit for the first time. And he's expressing his very unshakable faith that it is God that has done everything that was necessary for him to have hope, for him to have life. And he's already gone through a whole bunch of stuff that's kind of unbelievable, being chased, being persecuted, being scourged, being driven out of town. They tried to stone him. They had to lower him out the window in a city wall once, you know, just one thing after another, after another. And you hear in his writing to the Romans, he too, he has this unshakable hope because he knows who it is that has his hands literally up underneath him, supporting him and holding him up. Fran went through a lot. You know, he was already starting to suffer the effects of Huntington's 
when I was transferred here back in 2013 and starting, you know, experiencing some struggles with it and what kept bringing him back as much as he could, faith and hope. It's where he found strength. It's where he found hope. And now, as we're here gathered for his funeral service, I would invite you to let the same thing, let God slide it underneath you to hold you up, no matter what your life circumstances are. We're having expressed to us from the inspired word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, speaking through various human authors over the course of millennia that are telling us over and over again that our God is there, our God is for us. From the very moment we were conceived in our mother's womb, God's desire is there for us to go through this earthly life and allow him to work through all of the experiences in our lives and assist us to be ready so that when this moment comes, we know something. And I don't mean we just know something, but we know something. That the power of God's grace and the redemptive power of his son, who literally gave his life for us, the perfect bridegroom giving his life for his spouse, the church, transforms this. This is not the end. Frank Fran did not cease to exist when his soul departed from his body. He still is who he was and who he loved they are still very much a part of Fran as he now stands waiting for that final day when Jesus returns and raises up even our frail mortal flesh and transforms it to be like his own. Immortal, unbreakable, unwoundable, no longer capable of suffering any illness or injury, but made eternal and immortal like Jesus' own and even lays out a pathway for us to help us to be ready. That's one of the things that is so really great about that gospel passage from Matthew. It's Jesus teaching his Sermon on the Mount, and he literally lays out, here's how you can let my grace be at work in you to help you to be ready for this time. And allow my grace to ready you, to prepare you, so that we can meet him face to face and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servants. Enter into the kingdom of God prepared for you. And as I find myself doing a lot, if you've never done it, I would invite you to pick up the New Testament, hit the very last chapter of the book of Revelation, and get a sense of what it is that is waiting for us. How many of you have been to a wedding banquet? I'm assuming some of you who are married at least have been to your own, I hope. A time of celebration and rejoicing and what's expressed through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through John who wrote the gospel and the book of Revelation, what does he tell us about what's waiting for us? when Jesus comes and raises up our mortal flesh to be like his own, we become a part of the everlasting, eternal wedding banquet of the Lamb of God. A joy, a time of praise and thanksgiving that our bodies aren't even capable of handling yet, but they will be. And everyone we have known, everyone we have loved, everyone who has loved us will be gathered together in that great wedding feast and rejoice forever. I would bid you to remember that just because he is physically gone from us, he is not spiritually gone from us, he is still part of the body of Christ, that living, breathing organism that is formed in Christ <clears throat> and that the love that he had for you, the friendship, <clears throat> excuse me, that he had for all of you did not disappear, has not dissolved, has not ceased. But in fact, now that he has been freed of 
all of the weaknesses that accompany us during our earthly life, his prayer for you and his love for you has now reached a much stronger level of perfection. And one of the things that those who have gone before us are doing is they are remembering all of us before the throne of God. Ask him to send forth, to pour forth upon us all that we need to help us for when our time comes. To help us to be ready and ready to be welcomed into that eternal wedding banquet of the Lamb. And now we lift Fran up for that banquet. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Fran received the light of Christ, scatter the darkness, and lead him over the waters of death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother, Fran, was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Fran seek consolation and comfort, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Fran, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Fran, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him or any human fault have affected him, 
it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially friends, family, and friends, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, To you, O God, is Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, 
and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us. This pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, especially Fran and all those who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, my soul shall be healed. At this time, all practicing Catholics who are regularly attending Mass and in the state of grace are invited to come forward to receive communion. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still. I am hopeful for all who are hopeless. 
my shield and partially as long as life endures I'm changed Amazing grace, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love. Amazing. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant friend who has journeyed from this world may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. With faith in Jesus Christ, we must reverently lay the body of our brother to rest. We pray with confidence to God in whose sight all creation lives that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our brother and command his soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant him a merciful judgment, deliverance from death and pardon of sin. May Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, carry him home to be at peace with the Father. May he rejoice forever in the presence of the eternal King and in the company of all the saints. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive, Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen. Go <laughs> so in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.